Hello everybody, welcome back to Red Tool House. Today, we are going to start putting our siding on our chicken church, and it's siding that we've milled from Poplar here on our property. And it actually was using my homemade jig to do the angled siding on the mill. If you wanna see video, I can link to it here. But now's the time to kind of test it and see how it's actually going to work. We actually experimented with several thicknesses, and I'll show you that as we get into this video. But let's start slapping up some siding. Now, in an attempt to look really productive, it's not that we put that siding up that quick. This is the, this is the downhill side or the east facing side that'll be in the actual coop portion. You can see that's where the pop door goes. So we've already got siding installed there. Kelly helped me do that yesterday, no, day before yesterday. So we got that in place and it's using a little bit thicker material. And let me show you here. As you can see in reference to my thumb or my finger, that that's almost three quarter of an inch at the bottom and, uh, and of course tapers at the top to about a half inch so that's the second round of siding we milled and ricked up and the reason why we put it on first is because it was on top of the stack <laughs> but it's dried out pretty well hasn't moved much because we, we uh, took it off the stack brought it right up here and stuck it on now we had a couple pieces left over that we were going to start on the other side and that's this side here of course and just in the two days it's been laying here it's it's got a little bit of a curl to it a little bit more than it had so even though this has been milled and been drying for two months now it still has got enough moisture in it that it's going to move around especially laying here in this sun where it's going to get this um, sun exposure to draw it out now earlier we milled much thinner siding you can see this stuff is crazy thin so it's about I don't know, three eighths inch on the small end and no, take that back. It's about three eighths inch on the large end and about a quarter inch on the small end. Now, the reason why we milled it that small is to see if we could maximize our yield out of each cant and get as much siding as possible. But with poplar, of course it's brittle, it can split and we've got some end checking. So on this side, actually thinking back, I should have done this side first with the thicker stuff because this side has to be the animal resistant side. Uh, this is the side that will be exposed. We'll probably still have a single strand of electric to keep something from digging under it. But if a raccoon wants to pull siding off, this is the side that, that he would most likely try because everything else, all the other sides are gonna be enclosed. So I think since we've got a couple pieces of the larger, we'll start on the bottom with that. That way if a raccoon's got a rip, he's gotta be hanging by one toe to be able to do it. But let's stick this on and see how it looks. All right, so now, obviously measuring to keep it parallel or to keep it plumb to everything, we're gonna come up and keep attaching. You can see, you can see this little framed out spot here. So we won't have siding in this space because this will be a fold down door. That's where Kelly can access the nesting boxes from the outside. Door fold down, that'll give her a little table to set uh, her basket on. She can collect eggs out of four nesting boxes because we'll have about 20 chickens, which should be enough. So we're gonna side around that, cut that notch out. Now, from what I've always been told on old school siding, of course with vinyl siding, you just, you just click the, the bottom lip into the top lip and go on to the next piece, and that's how you pretty much get your height established, checking your measurement every once in a while. With this siding, I can obviously just keep making a measurement from the top down to, the, to where I'm nailing the next board and see if it's the same on both sides, or, what I did last time, two days ago, is made a little jig, just a tiny little piece of wood block, notch cut out of it, measured, and I could just come sit it on top of the bottom piece that's already attached and make a pencil mark. So I knew that's where I'd stick the bottom of the next piece. And I would share that little handy jig with you had it not been for the fact that I think somebody with fuzz lips ran off with it. 
And no, I'm not talking about Kelly. <laughs> I'm talking about timber. I had it clearly marked, a little notch, had pencil marks on it, don't throw away, template. And it was sitting right here, and I think that dog just absolutely loves picking up pieces of wood. Don't ever get a retriever and name him Timber if you don't want all kinds of wood pieces keep coming back to where you're working or wood pieces from disappearing. So I'm going to have to make another jig since mine obviously grew legs and walked away. So nothing super fancy here. Obviously just a block of wood with a little notch taken out one inch up from the bottom. So that way I can lock it on the lip and mark. So I can double check that every once in a while by taking a measurement from the top down if I want to make sure I'm not running out. But if I stuck the first piece on level, that's a big if, <laughs> then we should be good to go to just keep running. Now when we box out around this frame, then we'll obviously have to start making notches and do some other things that'll slow us down. Okay, so I got that side sided, side, side sided. And um, yeah, there's some pros and cons of both of those. I think I'm definitely leaning toward the thicker, get less yield, but it's definitely more substantial and it hasn't curled as much. And uh, so here's the downside. So my corner trim pieces that the siding of course fits up against, they're three quarter inch. So when you have siding that's three quarter inch, you see you got that part sticking out. So if I do this again, I know, okay, well I need to make my corners maybe um, a full one inch or maybe an inch and a quarter. Ooh, that's kind of in the shade, isn't it? The other trim, the other siding pieces, of course, tuck in fine, but when they curled up, even this far out, they still split. So now, granted, we're going to fill that with paint and really lay the paint to it so it'll take care of that crack, but definitely gets a lot of curl to it. Uh, that's even been ricked, had tons of weight on it, and it still has curled up. So I like the yield that I can get out of the thinner material, but it's just not going to hold up over time, I don't think. Uh, definitely the thicker stuff's the way to go. And especially on, uh, the reason why I'm kind of testing this is to see where we want to go when we start working on some of the retreat projects that are going to have way more aesthetic value and going to need as way more aesthetic value. And of course, hopefully longer lasting life. Yeah, I don't want the chicken church just to go away anytime soon, but uh, repairing an eight by 10 is much easier to do than something much bigger we're building up at the retreat. So this is a good experiment to let me know exactly what I need to do my lap siding at if I'm going to do that. All right, so I finished up the evening, the other evening, putting the trim pieces in so I could start my siding, even put some uh, gable soffit pieces in. So that took a little while to put in. Didn't video that because that was pretty mundane. And uh, so now we're just gonna do the face here with the siding, fill in these gaps. And when I get up here to these little peaks, these little angles we'll see when we start to measure out where i need nailers because instead of trying to figure out all these different verticals uh, to put nailers for the siding to attach to once we lay up then i'll know exactly where my marks are should be maybe two different rows that i need to attach so we'll address that when we get there All right, so there's the front side all done. Got it all filled in. Um, don't believe anybody's gonna be hiring me to do lap siding anytime soon. <laughs> Not everything was square on that, but anyway. Does what it needs to do, I guess. It's a chicken coop, it'll shed water and uh, keep the critters out. Now we need to move on to the back. And man, I have second guessed myself 16 times over whether or not to actually put a window in here. Got it framed out, of course whether I want to do that. The roost bars are actually going to be on this side. They'll be going down toward the front door. So it means chickens will be roosting right here within the window. I don't know, this is north facing, so it's not like there's ever going to be any direct sunlight coming in, but uh, usually you want a 
they coop dark, so they'll go in and lay eggs, feel comfortable for that, go uh, roost without any issues. So I keep going back and forth. Obviously, if I don't have to frame around it and siding around it, then it makes it a lot easier to do, but I may regret not having a window. So you can guys can just watch along and see what happens when we get there. All right, so there's the back. As you can see, did decide to board up that window, but I'm going to leave the peak open because we're going to put a plexiglass triangle. In fact, we're going to take the plexiglass, I don't know if you can see it, all the way down there, the old, what I call the phone booth coop. So we're going to take some plexiglass out of that, box that in, so be some light, and then in the peak of the heat in the summer, I can pop that out and uh, obviously let some airflow go in there. So I think we're good to go. We'll just have to uh, see if I can get Kelly and the boys up here with some paint brushes, slap some paint on this, because that'll really hide some of the mistakes I made. <laughs> but definitely, definitely want to go with that thicker siding, even though I'm not going to get as much yield out of those logs. The thicker siding really stays more stable. we got a piece laying here still. Actually, that's not it. <laughs> Yeah, so when we have almost a half inch of, of uh, siding on the bottom, that definitely makes it better. Half inch to three quarter is what we'll start milling. So I'm going to adjust my jig accordingly on the uh, sawmill if we do lap siding. But I don't have any projects coming up now with lap siding. Well, so the next on the list after they paint, of course, is to put the doors on. Got to build those doors. Now we have four openings, so I need four doors. Now I know what you're saying. If this has four doors, it's no longer a chicken coop, right? It's got to be a chicken sedan. But now we got to get the front door built. We've got to get our nesting box door built. And then our clean out door built in the back. And then probably still go ahead and do a pop door. Although it'll always be inside the electric fence area. So not a huge deal. But if there's some reason I need to lock them up for some reason, then I'll have that pop door to close down. All right, well, I appreciate everybody watching. Comment below as normal. Let's get a dialogue going. Tell me all the things I did wrong. <laughs> all right, well, I appreciate everybody watching. Y'all take care.